Well, hello. This is Prophet Wes. This is Prophet Wes uh, coming to you this Saturday. Saturday, actually, uh, 1 o'clock mm -hmm. in the afternoon. And uh, <clears throat> there's two things that I want to say and um, as a way of encouragement and incitement, also in testimony. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited about God. I am truly excited about God, and I know I come on every day doing mm -hmm. videos, and I'm not doing music today. And sometimes I don't because there's sometimes when I do the music and trying to be like everybody else, and you know I realize that I'm not like everybody, but I try to do it like everybody. I try to put the music on and you know get everybody to come in. But every time I'm done with the message, a lot of times I'm, I'm fighting with somebody about they they crying about their rights, their rights for music, you know, for their music like. I want to use their music to get paid. And so, and I understand, I mean, it's a business and, you know, we deal with business. But when it's when it's about God's word, when you can see that what I'm doing, it's, it's for God's people. And you're talking about Jesus. And you're talking about salvation. And so now you're crying about somebody trying to take some money from you. So a lot of times I just don't do it because it becomes as a distraction, you know, whatever. So, but um, I'm live and no music at all. But I want to talk about, Two things I want to talk about, heart to heart, uh, relationship with God, and I'm going to use one example of a man and a woman as far as the heart to heart, because God is calling for our heart even a greater way. If he knows there's a pool, and God is pulling on our heart, your heart, individually. This is why he's saying the word today that you hear my voice, heart, not your heart. But um, one of the things, before I go into that, one of the things that I, I've observed and the things that I, uh, one of the things that I noticed that there's a wave and there's a move that's going on in in God and God's kingdom God is speaking and there, there's been times when God is almost like God sends codes or trails on his way with God on his pathway of righteousness and in this pathway uh, we have to be in tune and realize the trail or the steps that he laid behind hey baby come here come here come here Come in. Hey, Dylan. Dylan. Come in, baby. Come in. Come in. It's okay. I got it. Uh, she's here with me. That's okay. Got my little angel here with me. Uh, she's looking for me. And so what happens, God leaves trails and pathways on what he's saying and what he's doing. And those that are in tune and that, that really see the pathway is catching on to what God is saying. There's a certain... There are certain steps, there are certain codes that God is leaving, and those leaders and those that are sensitive to hear what God is saying, they catch it. They're catching it, they're hearing it. But then, and they're they're, they're delivering message, delivers message, and the message the same old message. But then there are so those people who are like they are seeing it, they are seeing it, they are seeing it, they are doing it because they're seeing it. They're not doing it because they have a relationship with God. They're not intimate with God, but they're doing it because. Everybody else is doing it. They're, they're speaking words. Uh, you got people who come on Facebook. They come on social media and they steal messages. They hadn't been before God, but they're still messages. And they get this message like it's, like, like it's their message, like they studied for it. And so you have a lot of thieves. You have a lot of thieves on social, social media who are stealing messages, even though the message comes from God. All messages come from God. But the message that you get personally, it comes from your personal relationship with God. My message can't come from another person, what they're doing with God. My message comes from my relationship with God. Just like me and Emily, my message and our message, our conversation, it comes from our relationship, our intimacy. But now, a lot of people, what they're doing, they're stealing. They're stealing, and they're not spending time with God. And uh, I will tell you, it's almost like, if I can use uh, Eli and Samuel, when God was calling Samuel when he was a boy, and God was calling him, but Samuel, so Samuel, so Eli went to Samuel. Um, now Samuel went to Eli and said, well, this, this, someone's calling me, someone's calling. And the Bible said Eli perceived that it was God that was calling him. And so Eli gave him instructions and told him to lay down again. And when he called, just say, uh, my servant, this is this is your servant. I'm here and speak to me. And so he did that. And see, the thing about he, he, uh, Eli, Eli was a priest and he was old and he was going blind. And God's spirit was leaving him. And see, he, God was, had left him, but he knew what God sound like. And because he knew what God sound like, he was able to give a young fellow instructions. And so that's what, that's what some leaders or some people are doing now, that they know what God sound like, 
And so they're given instructions from what they know or they perceive what God is saying. Even though God's spirit has left them, but they're still going in the echoes. They're still, they're still going in what they used to do, how they used to, how they used to perform, how they used to react, uh, that relates that they used to have with God. And so you got a lot of uh, pseudo leaders who, and the reason why God is separated from them is because they failed to sanctify God's word in the hearts of the people. They chose greed. They chose money over souls and over righteousness. And so that's the one thing that I've noticed. But uh, briefly, because my baby, she, she just want me, uh, heart to heart. If, if I can talk about the heart to heart, and um, God is calling us, he's calling our heart. He's calling us to have a closer relationship with him. That's why I said heart to heart, relationship with God. And connected to the heart to heart, relationship with God is worship. The Bible says that God, the Spirit of the Lord is going to and front of earth seeking for those who have a perfect heart before him. In other words, those whose heart is very, very open and sincere to hear what God is saying. This, these are the people that God is looking for. God, God is looking for the people who are heart is open to receive and just to simply hear what he's saying. See, because he's, what he's speaking is life. What he's speaking is everlasting life. And so uh, this is why God is pulling on your heart. He's pulling on those strings of your heart. This is why he says to rend your heart and not your garment because at this place of relationship, the more you become closer with God, the more you hear his heart. And then you hear in his heart, you'll know his ways. See, God is calling for worship. In this, in this hour, God is calling for worship. He really is. And as an example of worship, and I'm going I'm to use this example, maybe me and my wife, we use this example, me and my wife, uh, and then we're going to equate it to our relationship with God and what he's calling for. Now, in a relationship, in a marriage, when a man and a woman is married, the Bible says, God said, what God has put together, let no man separate. But also the Bible says the bed is undefiled. And so, one of the greatest forms of worship because it's been sanctified by God is when that man and that woman come together in an intimate moment and he gives his heart, he gives his, and she gives her. And that moment they climax. And from that, there comes a creation, that comes life, that comes a baby over nine months or so. And so the greatest form of intimacy is when she gives us up, he gives us up at the same time. This is where God wants you to be and us to be as far as him naturally so naturally so uh naturally so in that god when it comes to worship that man and the woman they are giving each other's heart see god is after your heart and the more you give him your heart and the more you give him everything that means your your hurts your pains your fears uh your desires your, your failures and all of that the more you give this to him in that moment uh god is going to meet you and become more intimate even with you because the more you intimate with him, the more he's more intimate with you because God is always here. And but the more you become and reach out and become more intimate with him, God is going to cause your deliverance to come out or come forth or bring forth creation. Your blessing. There are many blessings and there are many breakthroughs and there are many healings and there are many understandings that come through a platform of worship, of intimacy. That's when, and see, the thing about it with worship, if I can explain, worship is a sacrifice. A sacrifice, if you notice in the Bible, before Jesus died, uh, when there, 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 there was a need for atonement, they would take a priest, and that priest, and something had to die, a bullet. That thing had to die and be offered. And in his offering, that was a form of communication. And so the reason why uh, uh, God wants you to worship him, because see, God wants you to communicate with him. He wants to have communicate, a communicative relationship with him. This is why God wants your heart to be more intimate. But in order to get to God, in order to become more intimate with him, you have to give up something. You have to sacrifice something. I'm going to give a part two to this. I'm going to have to go uh, soon. Little baby girl, she uh, she wants my attention. But uh, that's going to be a part two. But God wants your intimacy. He wants your relationship. He wants your heart. Those things that you're weak in, those things that you have issues in, God wants those things. The Bible says strengthen those things that remain that are ready to die. But God wants to sacrifice. This is why God wants you to uh, fast. This is why God wants us to pray. This is why God wants us to read. And, and those things that uh, that has gotten in the way of, of God and has gotten in the way, God wants you to do things that will make you even closer to him. God wants you to go back to your first love. That means to pray, to worship him, to do all those things that you did when you first met him. That You know, when you first fell in love, you know how it was when you got that feeling? When you got that feeling, God wants to give you that feeling again. Hello, Victoria. God want to give you that feeling. He want to give you that feeling. See, like with me, 
there's a burning in my heart. My heart burns. My heart burns because I'm so on fire for God. And, and see the thing about it. Think about it. I'm not after the masses. You know, I was told one time, go get the big fish, get the big people. And if you get the big people, all the small people will come. So, but when I read my Bible, the Bible said, Jesus said, the least one, ones, ones in the kingdom is the greatest. I'm after the lost sheep. I'm after the one that people are rejected. And so, and those people that uh, society smile, uh, frown upon and don't look upon and the church turn their back on and say it's useless. That's what I want. I want that one. I want to reach everyone that God puts in my way. And so my heart is burning. The reason why my heart is burning because I have a relationship with God and I want to get closer and closer to him. I feel I have a feeling where, you know, when you, when you have a feeling where you just feel somebody and you just love them so much that you just have a feeling you love, them, you love them, you just have that sensation. That's what I have with God. There's a sensation, that sensation that just keeps me pushing, that sensation that keeps telling me to go ahead. Even when I want to quit, even when I want to walk away, even when I want to say enough is enough. Even when I want to close my eyes and just just walk, uh, quit the walks of this life, there's something inside of me that keeps telling me to go ahead. Even when I want to stop, even when I even when I want to close my eyes and roll up, don't want to do nothing at all. When I feel at that time, my emotions might say, "Oh, God, have you abandoned me? God, have you forsaken me?" But even in those places, there's a burning in my heart, and there, there's a sound, and there's a voice in my heart that pushes me forward. And that keeps to telling me to go ahead. See, because in my go ahead, I know that I will go past the very thing that I'm facing. See, because I know that in my struggles and I know that in my trials, I know that Jesus is in there. I know Jesus is in the midst of what I'm facing because all I got to do and even you, if you're in a situation and that situation is bad. If you're in a situation and that situation is horrible, but if you won't change, if you want the situation to change or even you want your mindset to change because some situations, God don't want you to leave that situation because that situation is part of a download for your breakthrough and for your power and your authority. See, God is taking you to a new dimension and that new dimension comes through your pressure. See, because pressure busts pipe, but pressure also makes. And see, God is making something out of you. See, See, God is giving you a voice to speak. And everything that you go through, God is giving you a testimony wherein you're able to speak and talk about what God has done and what God is doing and can do in that situation because you, 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 uh, they have overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. So what I want to say to you, I'm getting all excited, but there's power in your testimony. And see, God wants to give you a greater testimony with him. And the way that he's going to give you that greater testimony with him, he wants you to worship him. <coughs> worship also means to bow, to bow down, to humble yourself, to say, God, give me your love. God, give me your power. God, I need you. God, help. And when you call him and help, he's going to show up. Even in a dangerous situation, even David said, even, in a, even if I'm in hell, if I call on you, God, I know you will be there. And so it doesn't matter what kind of situation you're in. If you call on his name, he's going to show up and he's going to give you strength to bear that situation. And in that situation, see, pressure and stress, it's almost like lifting weights. If I can use this example, when you lift weights, when you lift weights, say for an example, you're lifting some weights for the first time, something heavy. And the first time you lift it is heavy. But if you keep lifting that same weight, then eventually it's going to become lighter and lighter and lighter. And then what's going to happen, what the thing what was a challenge before, it ain't going to be no challenge. And see, God wants you to get, become familiar with the pressure. God wants you to become familiar. He wants you to get muscle memory on that thing, muscle memory. But also God wants you to get muscle memory. When you're in bad situations, he wants you to have muscle memory on what he done before. See, because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, a lot of times we forget. Even the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they forgot. They forgot what God did. <coughs> they did. But they needed muscle memory to remember God's goodness and his benefits. See, this is why God is calling for us to worship him. This is why God is calling for us to give thanks. Because when you give thanks and when you worship him... You are saying, God, I remember. And God, I thank you. God, I honor you. I know it was you that brought me out then. And surely you will bring me out again. And so I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Now. She ready. She ready. She ready. Okay. 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 But it's going to be a part two. It's going to be part two. Heart to heart. Heart to heart. God wants your heart. 
the most intimate place when you give your heart, just like in a relationship <coughs> with a husband and wife, most intimate place, there's a climax. At that climax, life comes. God wants life to come. God wants you to climax in his anointing. God, God wants to meet you head on. God, God wants to meet you. He wants to, he wants to become the love of your life. He wants to become the love of your soul. He wants to love you like you, uh, you've never been loved before. Because he's the greatest lover. He's the greatest love. You thought you had some love. You thought some man did it. You thought some woman did it. But Jesus, he'll sweep you off your feet where you don't want no more. Amen. Heart to heart. God bless you.